I remember one late night after working in the fields every day for over 40 days, I was tired of training, working, and just thought, what would it hurt if I slept in one day? I asked Dad if it would be okay. He said, sure, it's your decision. You can sleep in any time you like. It's your choice. I showered, crawled into bed, and didn't set my alarm, and for a few seconds imagined sleeping in. At 4 a.m., my alarm rang, and I couldn't find it. By the time I did, I realized it was across the room, on the dresser, and a small light over it. So I had to crawl out of bed and turn it off and then look at the clock. It was 4 a.m. Next to the clock was a short note. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you're listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast, where we inspire participation, communicate precision, and empower performers to podium. And we would ask you to tell your friends and relatives and people you work with to go to their favorite podcast provider and become an 831-er. Join us. Be inspired to live your best life or go to junglejimhunter.com or YouTube and subscribe, download, click on like, rate and review us, and become an 831-er, somebody that helps somebody else live their best life. I had the best life because of 831 people that helped me in my career, and I am so grateful for all the help I got. I hope I'm inspiring you every day with these podcasts. It's 33 days to the 32nd Olympic Games and 64 days to the 16th Paralympic Games in Tokyo coming up this summer, and I hope that you will watch and support our team. Well, today we're going to talk about the Olympic motto. Although the athlete has the Olympic flame of commitment burning bright in their heart and the Olympic flag of responsibility firmly planted in their daily training and preparation, the next symbol has to be the one that needs emotional ascent of conviction at every exertion. What is the greatest enemy to an Olympian? What is your first answer? What would you say? Competition? Skill level? Physical strength? Equipment? Coaching? Organization? Finance? Is it family heritage? Maybe community support? Maybe country support? Hmm. Could be officials or judges? Maybe even venues? The greatest enemy to an Olympian is one word. It is a word many athletes get comfortable with. What is it? We propagate this word mostly in the media by referring to athletes as having given 110%, never realizing by saying it that... Number one, giving 110% is an impossibility. So I wish people would stop saying it. You cannot give more than 100%. The problem for most of you is you've maybe given 50% at best. And you finally wake up when you suddenly push yourself beyond the limits that you have and you realize that you have way more to give than you've ever given. Number two, somehow this is their best. And that now that they have given their best, this is good enough. You see, we get comfortable with being good enough. The greatest single enemy for an Olympian is the word good. Why? Because of the limit of the two words that go with it, better and best. We say, that was a good performance. Then follow it up with, but you can do better. Ha! Huh. This moves the bar of expectation at the precise moment of acceptable performance to an unacceptable performance. How many of you have done that to your child or to yourself? Creating discouragement in the mind of the performer. Then we question this a step further by asking an even higher benchmark question in saying, is that your best? Wow, I bet you never saw that coming. Our present culture measures each person by external standards in every assignment, lesson, test, project, and performance. Know the external benchmarks. Yes, you need to know them. But measure yourself internally by what you do today in light of what you did yesterday. Many times we settle for good grades, good performance, good coaches, good organizations, good equipment, good government, good health care, and good education. However, it is easy to become complacent with this thinking. Is good good enough? If you are not moving forward, you are going backward. Did you know that? The minute you stop moving forward, you're going backward. It doesn't sit there and just hold. It moves one way or the other. Whether you see it or not, it's moving. We like to compare, measure up compared to others. Good is where you are today. Better is where you can be tomorrow. Best is what it is when it is tested. But the moment the test is over, it starts the process all over again. 
we can be subtly lulled to sleep on yesterday. The Olympic motto is Sidious Eltius Fortius, or in English, swifter, higher, stronger. It should change the way we look at our performance from measuring ourselves to others, teammates, neighbors, or competition, but to only one person, you. That's who you should compare you to. If you did 50 sit-ups today in your first set, did you do 51 in the second? If you ran 100 meters in 15 seconds today, did you run it the next time in 14.999? And then the next time after that in 14.998? That should be how you measure your progress against yourself. The Olympian knows the motto is open-ended adjectives with only the limits you set for yourself. You see, Sidious Eltius Fortius becomes swifter, higher, stronger, as in how you determine what swift is, or how high is, or how strong strong is. It's as strong or as high or as quick as you set it. You, me, anyone could become the best without a competitor. You could be born in a small town like, well, let's pick Seanovan, Saskatchewan, where I come from, and set a world record without ever going to the games. Yep. You could become the best of the best of the best. And then if you qualified for the games, you could go and compete and win. And you'd never have to compete against anybody else except yourself. That's the attitude you must have to be the best you can be. People ask me how I can have confidence. How do I know if I can win? We erode that confidence because of the good, better, best syndrome of measuring ourselves against a preset standard of competitor rather than the Sidious Eltius Fortius standard of being as fast, high, and as strong as we can be and inviting our competitor to step up the line and test us instead of us testing ourselves to him. The barrier to the mile was four minutes for almost 20 years. Media coaches, athletes, and breaking that barrier said it could not be done. Yet, it was broken by one man first. Then dozens have done it since. I wiped the sleep from my eyes, and I focused on the note. Shut the alarm clock off and read the note. Dad had been listening to everything I told him. He knew I kept track of every day, how many training days I had left, and how far I still had to go. That I was 2.25 years into the six and a half year plan, which meant I had 517 training days left before I had to stand in the start in Sapporo, Japan. In dad's timing, you lose two thirds of every day because you do have to sleep and you do have to do a lot of other things that take up your time. And so if you can get eight hours a day or one third of the day to train, well, you're lucky. You've got to fight for that. The note simply said this. And these are your words, son. Sidious, Eltius, Fortius, swifter, higher, stronger. You determine how fast, how high, how strong you will be. Go back to bed. I'm sure the Austrians are sleeping. Ah, I didn't go back to bed. I got up and it set the tone for the rest of my career. Thank you for listening. I hope you will have grown and will be living your best life the next time we meet. My quote for the day I'm going to put it last today. Bach, Wayne Gretzky, and Bill Gates didn't wake up each morning asking, hmm, I wonder how Beethoven and Gordy Howe and IBM are raising the bar today. I doubt it. I'm sure they were focused on what they were doing. <laughs>